Hey guys, Deva here. It's been a while since I last posted a build video and I know it's kind of late for build videos since Iceborne is coming out in 3 weeks but I'm pretty confident that a lot of people and newcomers will not be ready to straight up go into master rank so this will give them a better preparation for smooth transition between high rank and master rank. But it's not only that, a lot of content creators just show you builds and don't explain each of them or where they will be viable. So I'm trying today to give you the top 10 non-elemental charge play builds but as well explaining where it's worth to use each of them. And don't worry, if I see that this video is doing well and you guys enjoying it, I will be definitely straight up start working on the best elemental charge play builds since most of the key art charge plates are very viable in the meta. I'm just going to quickly explain the skills that non-elemental charge plates should have so you know why I'm using them during the video. Handicraft for increased sharpness which leads to increased damage. Focus for quick charging and having your files ready faster with about 4 hits. Maximum might since charge plate does not have stamina draining moves and it's mostly gonna be active. Artillery for increased file damage. Capacity boost for extra files for more damage as well longer charge shield and blade. Level 1 guard is really everything you need to remove guard point knockback for any monster in the game. Most of the attacks require 0 but some 1. And some attacks like Behemoth or Nergigante Tailspin will always give you huge knockback regardless of how many levels you use. So anything more than 1 guard is completely wasted. Non-elemental boost which gives you intense damage increase on weapons with hidden element or no element at all. Weakness exploit since Diablo has a lot of negative affinity and you sure don't wanna be hitting for negative crits. Attack boost and agitator are not a must but are great for a damage increase but I have a lot of balance builds on this video with health boost and guard up and you know all those survivability builds so be sure to watch all of the builds. With that said, you should be able to understand all of the following builds. So I'm going to start off with the first build and the most classic, the Chet Blade build. This is probably the most overused build that is absolutely viable for every monster in the game and it's focus for quick charge up SAD spamming gameplay and file damage. This build has a 60% affinity on weak spots, 60 hits of blue sharpness which is about to 6 to 7 SADs which is completely enough for any non arc temperate monster in the game. As for augments you will always use one health regeneration, like health regeneration is really overpowered for charge blade, actually for any weapon, you should never run a weapon without one health regeneration, except on heavy bow guns. And for second augment you can choose between one attack or affinity, but for this build I prefer attack, I've made some with affinities. So the second build is the white sharpness build. This draws the true power out of the horn charge blades. White sharpness will last for 20 hits which is exactly enough for 2 SADs. And white sharpness gives you a boost of 12.5% on your raw damage but as well can buff elemental damage if available. So double charging in the beginning and hitting the SAD melees on the monster's head, which mostly is the highest hit zone value, can absolutely demolish and drain about 50% of its HP already. Since I also want to make an actual comparison between the cloud charge blade later, I picked my target to be Nergigante during the whole video and as you can see it hits around 400 damage on the head without buffs and the second melee is something around 300 since you're breaking the spikes and you have less hits on value. So plus all the 6 files it's about 1000 to 1400 damage per SAD. So that's just crazy damage. And you can do that twice before your white sharpness runs out so it's definitely viable for short fights. Keep in mind that numbers change from monsters to monsters and parts from parts so I recommend you to join my discord server now and if you need any help or in-depth info we have the best bots that give you absolutely any info for any monster in the game. This build is mostly optimal for short hunts on single player since the fight will be way longer on multiplayer but I've made a variation build for you guys which is basically just switching out one max might. 10% affinity loss for one protect police jewel, which allows you to maintain your sharpness for a whole minute every time you sharpen. Check my Valhazak run if you want to see actual gameplay of this build. Our third build is the Master's Touch build, which is meant for longer fights since you will not lose sharpness for landing critical hits. 
This is a total of 68% affinity and I also went with affinity augment to maximize its effect. So if you're hitting weak spots during the fight, you will have around 160 hits of blue sharpness which according to my experience will last for about 2-3 to three minutes before you drop to green. If you're insecure with hitting weak spots of monsters, I definitely recommend you to go with my fourth build, which is the Razor Sharp build. The Razor Sharp skill comes from the Xenojiva 3 set bonus, which will half your loss on sharpness, or let's say it will double the amount of hits you have available. This means you will always have 120 hits of blue sharpness regardless if you're hitting weak spots or not. They were pretty much the highest DPS builds for Diablo CB, so I'm gonna show you now builds including health boost and being more defensive or survival friendly. Build number 5 is my balanced DPS and survival build, which is basically the very first build but sacrificing a small amount of damage to gain 2 levels of health boost. We also have Nergiganda set bonus, which is haste and recovery and allows you to regain health if you're hitting a monster continuously. If you wanna know how good health regen is compared to health regeneration augmentation, I have an answer for you, it's complete trash. Don't ever rely on haste and recovery health regeneration, it's nice to have it for free on the build since Nergi Gamma parts are pretty meta, but it's nothing compared to health regeneration augmentation. Build number 6 is basically the same build but sacrificing way more damage to gain a third level of health boost which I really don't recommend unless you're fighting arc temperate monsters on multiplayers. You're losing about 20 FR compared to the previous build which is around 5% overall damage loss. The next and last Diablos build is the Extreme of Counter build or probably for any G ring monster that will come out in the future so with this build you're pretty safe. Okay, this may seem like a huge meme to you, but guys, have in mind that Extreme Moth is a very easy target for SAD spamming and anyways the hit zone values are completely trash since it's hard to hit the front legs always. The amazing thing about Charge Blade is that regardless of how much attack and affinity skills you drop, your SADs will hit for around 90 damage which is just small damage loss compared to the max tips build. Be sure to always eat for the food skill bombardier but having artillery on your builds though because the two skills give alone 20 or more damage per file. This build will allow you to counter every attack including the pin attacks thanks to guard up. Have increased evasion distance to escape Charybdis and of course being very tanky thanks to 3 levels of health boost. You also have protect polish to secure your sharpness every 2 minutes and mind's eye in case you don't charge your blade and reflect on his belly. The best defense is offense guys. And you have to always focus to get better and you should watch speedrunners. Speedrunners are not elitist or how they called by other players but they're people who have interest for self-improvement and increasing Monsanto mechanics knowledge. So basically I don't know what people are doing on this game if they're not speedrunning. Like at least if they're not new. The end game on this game is basically speedrunning. That's end game on Monsanto world. You have nothing else to do than just improve yourself. Okay, with that said, out of topic, let's go to the 8th build. So we're switching weapons now. The Cloud Charge Blade is very underestimated. You will now think how can this Charge Blade be viable. It has like 20% less road damage. Well let me present you the infinite sharpness 100% crit builds. Claw and the Doggerwind weapons have the highest affinity in the game which allows for most weapons to reach 100% affinity without weak spots, which means no weakness exploit. In combination with one handicraft to reach white sharpness and the bonus master's touch, you will have true infinite white sharpness and critting every single hit regardless of the spot you're hitting the monster. You're saving a lot of time not having to aim always for weak spots to maintain your sharpness and you will never have to sharpen within a fight. This does not hit as hard as the Diablos when critting but keep in mind that Diablos does crit only for average 50% if not less of the time so you can easily catch up with constant crits but lack on damage. You can actually make two other variations of these builds which one of them is our ninth build which is sacrificing 3 levels of focus for 3 crit boosts which all give you an additional of 50% crit damage. This will slow down your SADs but anyway sometimes you're just overcharging because you don't get good openings. And since it's a 100% build it means that every single of your hits will be hitting for 50% more damage which is a 12% total damage increase. That number is huge guys. 
This build already hits almost as much damage as the Diablos on melees, but since it's guaranteed to create in theory, you're hitting way more melee damage. Here is some actual numbers. 367 is the first melee attack and 78 damage per file, which gives you an 850 to 1200 per SAD. The risk guaranteed monsters with this charge play will be more efficient, but people are too mainstream to try it out. So the 10th and last build of today's video is a mix between 8 and 9, which is the Wex Infinite Sharpness build and it's way more difficult to play it since it requires weak spots, but you gain even more damage with this build since it has both focus and crit boost. The only huge problem with this charge split is losing sharpness due to guarding since you're gonna drop to blue sharpness if you guard a lot. So what you can do about that is just simply switch out one crit boost jewel for one protect polish like we did with our Diablos 5 handicraft build. Alright guys, these were my top 10 favorite non elemental charge play builds. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed the video and it was a pleasure to make it and give you a nice start into Iceborne. So be sure to leave a like and comment of what you think of those or if you want to make me a little elemental charge plate video. And of course don't forget to join my discord guys aka cat gang we really offer great help as long as we can and you probably can get some hunting buddies to play the story in Iceborne with. So <coughs> <coughs> don't forget to subscribe. Um, with that said I wish you all a nice day and see you next video.